I'm doing another email share. Uh, you know, if I really sat down and just like took a day off of work, I could probably come up with a dozen more of these. Uh, but you know, frankly, I don't have the time. Uh, you know, maybe someday when I have a benefactor like Cedars does. <laughs> just kidding, Lloyd, man. You know I love you. Uh, so basically, let me share this with you. I received this just a few days ago, the month of March 2016, and a lady sent this to me. She says, Hi, I just received the news today that I have been disassociated. They will be making the announcement soon. In a way, I am relieved that I am free, but I am struggling with losing my parents. I was very, very close to them, so it's hard. I know I don't ever want to go back to being a JW, but I know that getting over losing my family will be the hardest part. I think your side is very important, and what you are doing to support those of us who have left is really great. No one who hasn't been a part of this religion truly understands what it is like. It's nice to know I am not the only person who is going through this. Thank you for doing such a good thing and for caring for others and how hard it can be to free yourself from this religion. So this sweet lady uh, sends me this message. And, you know, uh, this is not an unfamiliar story. But the fact that she was disassociated, you know, that kind of got me thinking because that's a little more unusual. Uh, losing her parents, you know, uh, just moving on. I got the feeling some time had gone by. Maybe she had faded for a while. That was my first thought. She'd faded, and then they, you know, caught her doing something, like which, which is just so absurd, but that's sometimes what happens. So, bless her heart, I sent her a message back. Hello, I am very sorry that this is happening. Once we get a taste of freedom, and once we wake up to the truth about the truth, it is often inevitable. As time goes on, it will get easier and easier. Hopefully, you have already been making new friends, ones that will love you and care about you unconditionally. The world is full of good people and good things. I'm happy to answer any questions or help you in any other way that I can. Also, may I ask why you were disassociated? With kind regards, Eric J.W. Struggle. So, she responded back to me uh, a couple days later, which was yesterday, and said, Hi, Eric. Thank you for your kind words. I have been inactive for almost three years, but just last week, someone who was still a witness somehow got onto my Facebook page and saw pics of me celebrating the holidays with my family who are not witnesses and celebrating Valentine's Day with my new boyfriend and they reported it to the elders at the hall I used to attend. Now, I'm going to stop there for a minute because, you know, <gasps> the horror, the evil, oh my God, she celebrated a holiday, she celebrated a birthday, she's got a boyfriend, and they had a valentine together. <gasps> you know, it's beautiful. It's beautiful that this lady is moving on with her life and enjoying herself and has someone that cares about her in her life. Uh, how many... JW women uh, that, that you know, uh, uh, have kids and are unable to ever get married again because they have nobody to choose from but the doofus with the bad suit that occasionally carries the microphone, uh, you know, that are never going to be able to get married in this system <laughs> or the next. Uh, it, you know, it's just, it's just sad. So she's happy. Some J-Dub sees her. She's been out for three years. And that's it. They blow the whistle on her. She says, uh, they reported it to the elders at the hall I used to attend. I tried to avoid their visits and calls, but they called me from an unknown number yesterday and caught me. Okay, so check it out. They're going to be doing that. The elders uh, fancy themselves to be spiritual policemen, spiritual detectives, and they're going to use you know, a virtual number. You can get it for free using an app. Or they're going to block the number and then call you, however they do it. So, the undercover elders call her with a, uh, with a different number. She answers it. She says, uh, where are we? I was tired of running and evading, so I talked to them. 
and they wouldn't left me, let me off the phone until I told them I no longer wanted to be identified as a witness anymore. They just kept repeating the statement in a question form until I just finally said yes and hung up. Then they called back and left a voicemail saying, because I had been unwilling to meet with them and show any repentance, that because they had gotten a verbal confession from me, I am no longer, uh, and that I no longer wanted to be identified as a witness, which those words they put in her mouth over and over, an announcement will be made that I am no longer a JW, and that it would be equivalent to disassociation. I'm not at all sad about that part. It's actually a huge relief. At least now I know I am free, and they have to leave me alone. But I miss my parents, and an aunt I was very close to. I hate that JW Org is allowed to get away with what they do, and basically hold people's family hostage from them unless they do what the JW Org wants. But my parents also have free will, and they can have contact with me again if they wake up someday and get away from that cult. I am more fortunate than most. I have a sister who is in the process of disassociating herself, and I have a brother who has been inactive for more than 20 years. I have a good friend who is also inactive, and I have a boyfriend of four months now who, ironically enough, was raised as a JW himself, but his family left it and he was never baptized. So I do have great support, and at least some of my family left, which makes me a lot luckier than most. My heart goes out to ones who finally get their freedom, only to find themselves very lost and very alone. I can't imagine. But freedom is worth everything. I will miss my parents and aunt terribly, but I cannot ever go back to being a JW. It's a scary, miserable life, and having been raised in it, I've done my time, and I will never go back. I came across your site and was just really touched. I can be so, it can be so scary facing a new start alone or without much support. And the fact that you want to be there for people and help them all you can is amazing. Like I said, if you've never been part of the org, it's so hard to understand. But having support from people like you means everything. Please keep doing what you are doing. And she sent me a smiley face. Well, I am reaching out to you right now, sweetheart, and giving you a big, happy freedom hug right through the internet, right through this video. Uh, I, I can truly and sincerely say that I love you, and I'm happy for you, and you have your head on straight, and you are moving in the right direction, the direction of happiness and freedom and self-exploration. You know, I just had a fantastic visit with a friend of mine that's been out now for a little while. And you know what he said to me? And, and I appreciate it. He said, I'm starting to get to know myself. I'm starting to learn what I want and what I like and who I really am. And you see, that's what it's about. Because when we suppress the true self and that cult self takes over, we, we sublimate and we repress our, our true feelings, our true sexuality, our our, our true desires, uh, and, and many other things that go along that. And, and this is not to say that, that having self-control or, or willpower is a bad thing. It's not. But let your real personality shine. If you're a goofball, be a goofball. It, you know, if you're, if you're gay, be gay. You know, whatever it is, be proud of yourself. Be happy for yourself. And I just want to end with one more thing I read recently in a really good book by Stephen Levine. It's entitled A Year to Live. And there is a lot in that book that's been helping me. Uh, and it's, it's very good reading. But he said in there that maybe the reason Jesus said not to judge is because once we stop and think, once we are alone, yeah, let me rephrase that. Uh, maybe that's why Jesus said to stop judging. Because once we run out of people to judge, and we're alone in the dark, and there's no one else left in the room, we begin to judge ourselves, And we begin to self-mutilate ourself, because we've become judgmental, and we have no one else to blame, and no one else to put the guilt on but, our, but ourself. So, we don't need to go there. We can just stop judging everyone, including ourselves. I love you so much. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your positive comments. I'll see you next time. The order is rapidly fading.
for the times they are a-changing. 